Several quick things for setting up your uh, magnetic device. First off, you'll use this thread locker that I'll send with the machine. Um, there's probably just enough back in there to attach this motor. Put the thread locker on these two screws and screw them in very gently. Make sure you, you take care not to cross thread the threads on the way in there. And everything's good. The motor should fit right perfectly on there. Already in the teeth where the screws will actually line up perfectly. So it's just a simple process to thread lock those nuts in. And then you'll place your system over the top of it. it it's a very tight fit. Um, it's meant to be that way so it won't leak out around here. Um, it's going to be really snug on this inside edge. I drew a line right here uh, with blue magic marker to show you how far back this way that the, the, the box has to go underneath the machine. You line it up on both sides with this blue line. And also too I have in this little hole here you'll see a yellow dot. You'll want to see that yellow dot. And one other thing underneath here you'll also see that the box will basically end up against the, the separation section that sends the other material down this other side so it fits up pretty tight up to that and everything's really snug pretty much all the way around here so you'll probably just have to push it down on there get it up above it push it down on there until your feet are touching the ground these are adjustable feet for any reason you need to level out the machine on this end this water collection bin for your waste and it's got an automatic overflow on it so that when your tailings fall in there it'll displace the water into a separate containing bucket or back into your recirculation bin so that's a quick way to recirculate the water as it over as it starts filling up with material so you want to fill this thing completely full with water until it starts coming out the tube it's critically important you keep this uh, tailings waste bin full so that the water will be flowing out the drain hose that puts water on the bottom of this magnetic barrel so that the the water tension as the material comes over the top if, it, if there wasn't a a water bin here it would tend to want to stick to the bottom of the barrel and try to return back through. If your water gets a little bit low you may hear a grinding noise under there. I have a, a, a metal thing that prevents the, a lot of the material from coming back through at large sizes so it doesn't damage the gasket or the rubber seal on the other side. So just pay attention and make sure you keep this water full at all times. When you're done you just lift the system up off the top of this thing and then you can get your material out of here or drain it out or replace it. And then for this, you also see it comes with its own water system and adjustment. So right now where it's set with the pump that I have on it, it's set perfectly. You may have a bigger or smaller pump, so you may need to adjust this for proper water flow. It doesn't really take a lot of water flow, so as long as the water's, you know, kind of hitting this, you'll see it just kind of slightly hitting up against the front of this, and as long as it's even across the whole table, you'll want to add your material basically right below this, uh, Basically this blue section here is for water flow and control and also to dissipate the water a little bit and flatten it out so it goes across the table smoothly. So you're basically your inputs anywhere in this area. The other thing when you're done running, if you are running fine gold, you want to clean this table off after the fact because it is going to act like a miller's table the way I have this surfaced. That it's going to capture probably super fine gold that you won't be able to see with your naked eyes. So you probably want to, when you're done running, take the time to, to really wash this section off into a, another clean bin down below, tip it up really steep so that it will wash through and it'll obviously go down through and you may find quite a bit of fine gold just stuck right on the top table. I also have some adjustment legs. They're very simple, basically a turnbuckle style. You just can spin it either way, one on each side behind this battery that I use for my pump and they just spin up and down place a level right here perfectly and then you can easily level your table or tilt it it also has enough adjustment so you can raise or lower this end a little bit this table can also be used dry and if you want to use it dry as a dry system you, you won't need this container bin on the end full of water you just basically put it as it is and you'll raise this up and you may need to set it on some higher wood blocks and really put this at a steeper angle if you want to run dry material down it and you might want to put some sort of a vibration little shaker on here and then of course you got your battery clips and any car battery motorcycle battery or whatever you come with 12 volt battery okay once you got the water turned on we'll, we'll go ahead and start the barrel up got to make sure that we take the black cable the battery clip and hook it to the negative on the on your battery and then you got to make sure that your red clip also goes to your positive. 
The reason why is you don't want this barrel to run in reverse. These motors can go either direction just by switching the wire. And we don't want the, the barrel running the opposite direction as it might, you know, do some damage to the rubber seal that's in there that prevents the material from, you know, swapping sides. So just make sure you hook up the battery the same direction every time and you're good to go. I like to put several different collection bins underneath the collection side of this. I, I just have a regular octagon gold pan sitting in here to catch the initial stuff and then of course I've got it so it floats over but you're going to get some floaties or some light material that will end up down here in a lower bin. And then also in this lower bin I've got a little metal divider that sticks up above the surface of the water and it drains out through here back into my recirculation thing and it really keeps the material clean going back through the system. And the other thing too that, that helps you know keep some of the bad material getting in here is this this mesh we have in here this stuff will collect a lot of the junk that does get sucked back through and you can pull this out of here and clean it out just like you would any other sponge and replace it or if it gets old and wore out you can buy some other new mesh yourself at any hardware store okay and this thing here is a little divider that actually touches the surface of the water and it can be adjusted tilted up or down you want it to barely touch the surface of the water it's going to keep the floaters or any light material, even the floating dust, that'll actually end up on the surface tension and it'll end up going up and over the barrel. Much of a problem for the gold I've, I've experienced, but at the same time, you, you, this here can, can adjust. And if you don't want to use it, you just tilt it up or remove it completely. This is the area you want to put in in the material. You don't want to put it in up here in the mesh or it will just get all clogged up. This mesh is here to displace and smooth out the water so it has a nice even flow across the table. And this here is obviously, like I said, for the surface tension floaters. So you add material here, it'll go underneath here. All your magnetics will start getting sucked off the table here as we'll show in a demonstration and go up and over the top into your, your magnetics collection bin. Your bin will fill up, and as it fills up with material, it displaces the water out and it will come out your drain tube. So you want to make sure your drain tube is either going back into your recirculation container or into a separate bucket. Also here, your drain tube coming out of your, your uh, magnetic waste bin. Basically, I'm just going to show you this really quick. This has been running probably now for 30 minutes, and I might have about an inch of water down on the bottom of the 5-gallon bucket here. It, Pretty much just a slow motion move and of course if you put more material in there it may come out a little bit faster but so yeah it, it would probably be several hours of use before you could fill up a five out five gallon bucket so here we'll add a little magnetic material there's also some kind of funny magnetic brown rocks you'll probably see some of the brown material going over the top too Kind of let it wash on down. As you see the magnetics, see how they're jumping, actually getting pulled from almost an inch or two back here. So we got a pretty powerful magnet in there. You shouldn't have much trouble. Try to add your materials from a back and forth motion so you kind of see how it goes. It'll sort of rain down. It helps with the separation of the magnetics as they come across the barrel and the other waste material. So if you get a nice kind of a raining effect, that's kind of the method and madness to the system. then it fills up in your waste bin. There is a good possibility you could have some light magnetics end up down in here 
that are just very weakly magnetic. I've, I've seen that, but that's really not a, a big problem. It's, it's very rare that I see much of that. This little device will actually slow down your material somewhat, and, and if it seems to be a problem and you don't like it, you can take it off. I just notice sometimes, like I said, you know, especially when I video for the public, they see some light dust, you know, some brown material, floating material come over here, and they automatically assume that your gold's floating away. So I just put it on there as an option for the owner. You can kind of take that as their own choice. So there it is. There's your system. Everything's running. Uh, the magnetics, everything worked great. I'll actually double check this just to make sure there's no magnetics in there. The other thing too, these little wing nuts here, these legs will fold up so everything will come collapse. This thing here drops down, it actually bends up for shipment. You just fold this down here at this joint into position, it'll sort of get tight and you'll understand and know where it goes. And then of course the same with these back legs. They'll, they'll spin up underneath here, put this wing nut up here on the top. And as I said, we'll ship without the motor attached. I'll also make another quick video showing it with an under, underflow sluice underneath here. Because you can add any kind of other sluice you want to run or feed this material into whatever other system you may want if it's a wheel or, or whatever, even a, maybe a miller's table or something under here. Even though this is already pretty much a miller's table on top. But what you get is some really nice material out of here. It's pretty clean, mostly all gold, any kind of rare earth, platinum metals, um, stuff like that. All your waste, your heavy metal or irons and stuff are gone. So, yeah, I usually like to run this back through another system. Or you can even just pan out what's in here and you're pretty much going to have it real easy. This is the shutoff valve and water system you'll receive. You'll, you'll get everything from here on up. You'll have to buy your own hose and pump. But the shutoff valve isn't glued at this point. In fact, this whole upper system isn't glued in case you've ever had to take it apart. But being it's a low water system and these joints are really tight, they don't leak. So, And also, so it makes it easy to clean your system. You can just do some light twisting on this and pop this off. And then there you go. You can go clean out your system, wash down the table, as I told you, in case there's any gold stuck on this upper table. And then you can set it back up. And I just usually use it like this. And when I set it back up, I twist this back in there, put some pressure on it, and you're ready to go. This is a shot of the pump I was using for demonstration. I picked this up off of Black Cat Mining's website, and I'm sure you can pick them up off of several other prospecting websites. Uh, this one, that site had two different sizes. This is the larger of the two. It's a little bit overkill for your system. As you see, the shutoff valve is almost three quarters of the way off. Obviously, it doesn't hurt the pump. I've ran them this way for years. If you want to shut them down that severely, it does not matter. It doesn't do any damage to the pump. Or just use a smaller pump. Or you may even be able to get away with hooking up a garden hose to the system. It's just a matter of however you want to hook it up. This is just an idea. A plug-in pump would be work just fine also. That you'd see maybe at Home Depot for fountains or, you know, those little pool pumps. While running the system, make sure you don't put any material that's going to be larger than one eighth. You got about a one eighth gap there with a little rubber trim, so something a little larger could get through there. But if you can run whatever you run through here through a window screen first and pre-classify it down, and then run it, because most of your magnetics aren't larger than that, anyways. Here's your good non-magnetic material where your golden stuff would be. From that run we just did, I got a rare earth N52 magnet, super powerful. Tip that around in there. As you see, nothing really on there. Now we're going to stick it to this piece of metal. And I'll put it into the waist end, the tailings end, the magnetic side. Stick it down in there and we'll show you what we have from the same run. Already pretty heavy, it feels like. There you are. There's the difference right there. Just from that short run, 